Welcome, 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 everybody, to The Straight Line with Ryan Leaf. We started the show yesterday with an amazing story about DeMar Hamlin and the continued improvement he was making. Well, we start the show off today with even better news. The breathing tube that had been inserted uh, on Monday was taken out overnight, and he was able to speak and breathe on his own to his former teammates. He FaceTimed the Buffalo Bills this morning. Guys were so excited. Uh, Everybody is just so excited. And what we're getting to learn and know more are about the people that made the biggest and most impact that night, right? Uh, The equipment staff getting the face mask off as fast as they could. Uh, the, The trainer who was able to perform CPR, uh, and, and restart his heart. So we're, we're learning more and more about the people who were uh, intricately involved in what went on and in the, in the way to save uh, the young man's life. And now, going into a weekend of games, I still don't know how a lot of these teams are going to play. They do have some optimism around them, but the emotionality of it all and what's carried all week long, it's got to be incredibly difficult to get ready to play football games. Um, uh, And speaking of which, the NFL last night came out with a statement, of course, what they were recommending to the competition committee who was going to vote on it today. They officially ruled out the Bills-Bengals game. It will be a no contest, okay? So there will be two teams that will play one game less than every other team in the NFL. Now, They made a very specific thing that that game had no effect on any other team out there either getting into the playoffs or being left out of the playoffs. That game was meaningless to that other than the seedings for for Buffalo, for Cincinnati, and for Kansas City. So their resolution uh, came in a three-scenario fold. If all three teams win, it stays the same. Uh, Kansas City stays at one, Buffalo at two, Cincinnati at three. But if either Buffalo or Cincinnati then meet Kansas City in the AFC Championship, the game most likely is going to be on a neutral field. And there have been some some venues batted about, Indianapolis being one of them, I think very similar distances from uh, Buffalo to there, Cincinnati to there as well as Kansas City to there. So that, that's, that's something. It's indoors. It would make it a much different atmosphere in terms of weather. I also uh, uh, was hosting uh, NFL Radio on, on Sirius XM last night when this broke, and we had some callers call in, and I thought this was an interesting concept. Whatever team were to lose, let's say Buffalo were to lose, and it came down to Cincinnati and Kansas City, that you play the game in Buffalo. Uh, and vice versa, right? If, if if Buffalo wins, Cincinnati's out, the neutral site could be in Cincinnati. I, the Cincinnati love for the Buffalo Bills and vice versa is something that is so pure. I mean, you go as far back as to when Andy Dalton came back and beat the Ravens that got the Buffalo Bills in the playoffs for the first time in forever and how they donated uh, to his charity. I mean, there is a love fest when it comes to these two teams. And so you you could see it on Monday night when everything played out. Um, the only way that uh, there's a couple other options, and and Cincinnati is 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 getting a little screwed here. Okay, and I'll tell you why. They are being named the NFC North champion before the game against the Ravens is played. They have a better winning percentage. They couldn't tie in terms of wins. They'll have one less loss than Baltimore. Baltimore would have beat them twice if they beat them this weekend. If the Chargers go on to win uh, against the Denver Broncos, that would leave the Ravens in at the number six spot, which means it would be a rematch between Cincinnati and Baltimore in the wild card round. And if that is the case, it will be decided by a coin flip where the game is played. And if you were telling me that the Cincinnati Bengals are the AFC North champion, they host a playoff game. That's the way it works. It does not sound too fair for them to flip a coin and ultimately get the sixth seed as an AFC North champion. So 
we're waiting to hear what the competition committee, which is the owners, decide on, on making this. They have to have a resolution done before the games are kicked off on Saturday because the first one up is Kansas City versus Las Vegas, uh, which goes a long way in deciphering who's at one and who's at two and who's at three. Those are the biggest ramifications. Neutral side, if it's any of those three teams playing. Now, if Kansas City were to get beat, uh, let's say by the Chargers, uh, or Jacksonville uh, in the divisional round, then everything plays out the same. Buffalo would host. Cincinnati would host if Buffalo were to get beat. All those situations become um, null and void if it's not Kansas City, Buffalo, and Cincinnati in the conversation. All right, speaking of the playoffs, I went and kind of put down uh, where I thought things would go. This is an interesting thing in the AFC. If, if chalk holds, essentially – if Kansas City stays at one, Buffalo at two, Cincy at three, Jacksonville beats Tennessee, goes at four, Los Angeles uh, at five, Baltimore at six, and then at seven, you either have New England, Miami, or Pittsburgh. All New England has to do is win, and they're in. If Pittsburgh and Miami both lose, uh, and New England loses, New England's in. So they're in the seventh spot right now. But ironically enough, we have New England at Buffalo this weekend. We have Baltimore at Cincinnati this weekend. Guess what? Those could be the same exact games a week from now. If it all holds true, this would be the playoff matchups. New England at Buffalo, Baltimore at Cincinnati, and Los Angeles at Jacksonville. We're going to get into some of the games and, and some of the reasoning behind why we're going to pick what we pick and what teams should do in terms of where they can be seated. On the NFC side of things, which we'll get in a little bit later, there's some very interesting possible matchups. Um, but last night, again, the NFL – released uh, the scenarios in which they would like to move past after canceling, after making the Buffalo Bills-Cincinnati Bengals game a no contest. Uh, they have applied uh, rules to a playoff format that would possibly have the AFC championship at a neutral site if it were to include those two of those three teams that we've talked about. I think this may be one of the. I think this may be fair. I, I compliment the NFL in finding a way where things are not equitable to be as equal as possible in this instance. Now, Chiefs fans, if they are fourteen and three, are going to complain. Uh, they 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 shouldn't necessarily right. Two of their losses this year are to both uh, the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, each one would have had a chance. Buffalo, if they win that game, they stay at number one. If Cincinnati wins that game, they are now the number one overall seed uh, if, if Kansas City were to lose uh, this week against uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. So all three have an opportunity, and that's what the league is trying to accomplish here. I will say this. If all three of those teams at the beginning of the year were told, hey, you have a chance to go to the Super Bowl, uh, and you got to do it on a neutral site, all three of those teams would take you up on that opportunity. I guarantee you they would. There may be some moaning and crying from fan bases, but ultimately these three teams uh, will be happy with that outcome. And, hey, I mean, if you're Kansas City, what does it matter, right? Buffalo, the last two regular season times have come in, should have beat them in the playoff in the divisional round, and Cincinnati, right, has beat them the last three times they played them. Twice in Cincinnati now, and then, of course, in the AFC uh, championship last year in Arrowhead. So home field advantage, not necessarily the same in Arrowhead. It is in Buffalo. That is a huge factor on this. Now, Buffalo can still get the number one overall seed if Kansas City were to lose tomorrow to the Las Vegas Raiders, who gave a heck of a fight to San Francisco last week. Then if that's the case, Buffalo has a chance if they were to beat New England to be the number one overall seed. And then all that stuff's thrown out the door, right? Then you have... Uh, Buffalo at one, Kansas City at two, and Cincinnati at three, and away we go. All right, Brian McFadden, good friend of the show. He's going to join us next here on the Straight Line, break down a few of the games that are going to be played on Saturday and Sunday when we come back right here. Welcome back, everybody, to the Straight Line with Ryan Leaf. We welcome in a good friend of the show, two-time Super Bowl champion, Mr. Bryant McFadden. Welcome back, Bryant. How you doing, bud? 
Man, I'm doing pretty good, Ryan. Thank you for having me. You bet. Uh, we, we've had multiple former players on this week. Uh, you know, I was talking to them about, you know, what we witnessed on Monday. And, and, you know, of course, it's much easier to talk about everything when we know the positive news that we've heard the last couple of days about DeMar Hamlin. Um, you know, for me, my wife and I were in bed. Uh, she started crying. You know, I, I, I started developing these physical symptoms of just like, you know, my back of my neck became like just like a, 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 a stovetop. It was just boiling and I was kind of sweating and, and, and you're aware of it. Um, how, how did it play out for you watching that Monday night game and to see a, an NFL brother like that down on the ground and all the re responses from teammates and, and his peers across on the other sideline? Uh, for me, I went from seeing the play instantly to being extremely scared and afraid. Yeah. Because initially when it happened, it looked like a routine play, routine tackle. And then, of course, hearing him stand up, seeing him stand up and collapse, you're like, okay, he might be a little dazed, right? And then when they showed that the play over and over again, I realized there was no helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. So clearly, there's nothing going on in regards to concussion, concussions or being concussed. There's something else going on that caused him to collapse motionless on the field. So when I saw that, I was concerned. I was afraid. But I, I became very, very afraid when I heard they were, were administering CPR to him in the yeah. field because that means he's not breathing. So just every day has been a very, very difficult day for me and I would assume for everyone that watch that ball game or heard of the stories the story or saw it you know after the fact every day was like i'm on pins and needles yeah because you're hoping for something you're not hearing anything and because you're not hearing any anything you know you start to think overthink the situation and just the love and the outpour of affection that he has been able to receive has been tremendous and not just individuals that are tied to football other professional sports have really showed their their gratitude to what happened in him, you know, gradually making steps, taking steps in the right direction. So today was the best news I think we've heard in regard to DeMar and where he is in his progress. And we must continue to pray and must continue to believe that, you know, he will make it out of this situation to regain some type of normalcy in his life just to be able to be the person that he's been throughout his entire life thus far. Uh, it, it humanized the, the NFL player. I really do believe that. I think a lot of people, you know, they get placed on a pedestal and they look are looked at differently. And, and, and I think it humanized the player to one another, to former players, to current players, because you know better than anybody. You step on the football field, you, you feel bulletproof, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you think you're going to run through a brick wall and, and always be able to do it until – you know, you, you can't. I, um, let me ask you quick, this question before we, we go move on to these games. Of course, we're going to talk about the Patriots and Bills uh, first up. But uh, with what went on this week as a former player, if you were on that team, you knew what it was like to prep and get your mind right, your body right, to play a football game, to play an NFL football game at the highest possible level. What, what do you think these Buffalo Bills players, because they really probably couldn't really start to – to decompartmentalize of what was going on until, you know, really today, and the game is, is two days from now. How, how would you have been able to prepare for a game when something like this happened, if something like this ever happened? Of course, you know, throughout the week, you need to go, you have to go about your business professionally, but mentally you're not all the way in until you hear something in regards to his status. Right. Today was the best news because I heard he was able to speak to his teammates. His father has done a real good job and keeping everyone up to date, including the Buffalo Bills. So just being able to hear him talk and, and address the team in the way he was able to from what I heard, that does wonders for me. Yeah. Because now I'm optimistic. You're okay. You're going to be okay. You might not be the same individual before Monday, but most importantly, you have life. You, you're, you're, you're regaining your health, your strength. So, yes, we got a ball game to, play, to be played. And you, and from what I've heard, and I'm pretty sure you heard the same thing, the first thing he said, the first question when he was able to, to speak to the doctors was, did we win? Yep. So if you're part of the Buffalo Bills, man, our teammate, our brother, has been out of it for some days. And the first thing he asked about 
when he came to wasn't about family or friends. <laughs> it was about did we take care of did we our, take our, care of business? Our, our business. Our, yeah, are we right? are we still the number one seed? Yeah, no, all of that stuff played out. All right. Yes. All right, speaking of that game, the Patriots are going to travel to Buffalo. The Patriots have a playoff bid on the line, right? They win, they're in. Buffalo still has a shot at the number one seed. As you know, the NFL released a possible change. It depends on what the competition committee uh, okays today and confirms and approves. But this is a little interesting because if the Chiefs win on Saturday – Buffalo then doesn't have a chance to be the number one seed. They have a chance to be the number two seed because even if Cincinnati wins, they win the tiebreaker there. What are your impression if the Buffalo Bills have seen the Chiefs win? How do you expect this game to go? I know you're going to see it from two different angles. Yeah, I see, and that's the thing I don't like in regards to the scheduling. Yep. I feel like Kansas City Raiders should have been played the same time as Buffalo and the Patriots. Because you just hit on it. If Kansas City wins Saturday, Sunday, Buffalo beating the Patriots, you're just beating them because you don't like them. Right. It does nothing in regards to improving your seed in the playoffs. So when it comes to the betting angle, with that being said, I think the total is the best way to go. Because I'm making this pick under the assumption that Kansas City take care of their business, take care of their business against the Raiders. Yeah. So if they do so... Do we expect to see a full a, 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 a full game of Josh Allen and crew? No. Why? Not necessarily. You don't need to. Yep. Right? You got to get ready for a meaningful game the following week. And, which mo- is and in most the and most likely, uh, it could be because I could see Pittsburgh getting beat by the Browns. I could see the Dolphins getting beat by by the Jets. The Jets. It, I mean, it could be New England again. Who knows? You know that yes. might. Yeah. So so I think the total is the best way to go, and I will take the under. Okay. Um, the first meeting. I think the final score was 24 to 10. 34 total points was the total in that in, in that ball game. The total is set right now at 42 and a hook. One thing I know about these two teams, defensively, they find a way to get stops. And you look at the Patriots, especially seeing what they can do in rushing the passer, especially if we don't see Josh Allen for four quarters, they're going to have success. And granted, even with the starters or without the starters defensively for the Bills, let's keep it real. The Patriots offense has been average at best. They've been average at best. So I think points will be very, very difficult for both sides offensively, especially knowing the mentality if the Chiefs take care of their business. So the under is the direction I'm going. All right. I like it. I like it. Uh, uh, maybe no not Josh Allen for most of the game, you know, and then that defense for, for the Patriots has been a huge reason why the Patriots are still yes. a viable playoff option. All right. Moving along, we move to the, the Cincinnati Bengals. They take on the Ravens. They kind of got the back end of this – this this scenario based decision uh, that the NFL put out because if the Bengals who have been touted and have been told they are the AFC North champion they're the AFC North champion period regardless of outcome of this game on Sunday but if they were to lose uh, and uh, and the Baltimore Ravens stay at the sixth spot and they have to play each other again Cincinnati could lose out on a coin toss and have to go to Baltimore for the wild card weekend, having been the AFC North champion. So it, it's, they, they want, they need and want to win this game. If they do yes. that, they are in control. They'll host a playoff game and then they'll get a chance most likely to get uh, that game with Buffalo in Buffalo for the division uh, division title to get, or the division playoff game to get to the AFC championship. All right. Ravens at Bengals, Bengals seven point favorite uh, over under is at 40 and a half. What do we got? I like Cincinnati. I like Cincinnati. They've been one of the more, consistent teams in the last five, six ball games. They have really ascended in a different direction. You really can't say the same in regards to Buffalo, uh, Baltimore. I'm sorry. I don't expect to see Lamar Jackson play, but that being said, Tyler Huntley as a starting quarterback for, for, for Baltimore, their offense is not the same. No, nope. we saw that this past Sunday against the Pittsburgh Steelers, since he's been in the lineup, their offense has really been a hard watch. Opposite of what we're seeing with Joe Burrow and crew, in Cincinnati. And when you look at these two, historically speaking, the last 10 ball games, I mean, three and seven, ATS, the Ravens are. They have, they've had issues in regards to covering the spread against the Cincinnati Bengals. But you're telling me Tyler Huntley versus Joe Burrow in Cincinnati, and yes, Cincinnati needs to win this ball game. I expect to see a fast start for Cincinnati. I expect to see them cover this spread being seven points. 
Yeah, the the NFL really incentivized this game for the for the Cincinnati Bengals by kind of putting that that coin toss coin toss nonsense at their feet. All mm-hmm. right, AFC North uh, compatriot, the Pittsburgh Steelers still have a chance. They need some things to help. They need to win. They need to see Miami and New England get beat. But this Steelers team has really kind of come on late in the year, right? They have a chance to stay above 500 and give Mike Tomlin a uh, 17th consecutive year of doing so. Browns at Steelers. Uh, Steelers are favored by two and a half points. Totals at 40 and a half. I love Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh, and here's why. Mike Tomlin, Ryan, used to tell us all the time, especially in the late month of December, you're either one of two things, right? You're either thriving in this league or you're surviving. The teams that are thriving, they have their eyes set on January football, mid-January football. For the Cleveland Browns, they have their eyes set on vacation time. I want to just get through this last ball game with no injuries, no bruises, so I can enjoy my offseason and focus in on 2023 NFL season. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, they've been playing some inspired football led by the young quarterback defensively. Really, really improving unit with T.J. Watt and crew. Mike Tomlin has put forth another tremendous coaching effort. I like Pittsburgh in this spot because they're the team that's thriving. They're the team that has a lot at stake, and they know how important this ball game is to them. For Cleveland, just get through this game. No injuries. Let's get ready for vacation time. So give me Pittsburgh, especially only two in the hook, so a field right. goal. Yeah. A Chris Boswell field goal gets me in the winning door. I love Pittsburgh. Do you, do you like the under, too? Yes. Yep. Yes, I do. Points I bet, think this, point, is a, this is an opportunity, Ryan, where you can double dip. Yeah, there's a there's a pretty good points bet uh, app, points, points bet sportsbook app, uh, same game parlay here, where you can get Steelers minus two and a half plus the under, um, and that's a plus 240. Yeah. Yeah. Double yeah. dip. Double dip that one. I like it. I like it. All right. Titans at Jags. Of course, this game is for the AFC South Championship. Titans were seven and three in week eleven. The Jags three and seven. And guess what? They're both have they're both in a position to to win the win the title. It's in Jacksonville. Jacksonville upset Tennessee in Tennessee a few weeks ago. How do you see this one playing out? Jags pretty big favorite in this one. Big favorites, and I'm willing to see how good they are. Yeah. I'm putting my money on Jacksonville. You're playing against Joshua Dobbs. You're playing against a team that has really been beat up injury-wise. Yes, they may get King Henry back, but yet and still, it's basically him by himself. Joshua Dobbs has no business beating Jacksonville in Jacksonville. Joshua Dobbs has no business covering the spread. Point blank. The Jaguars are the more healthier team. They've been the team that has been the most consistent impactful on both sides of the football their young quarterback has really grown a lot especially in the last last month of the season and they have all the marbles on the table for them they got to win so you can't play around with this tennessee titans team the sense of urgency should be there it will be there i believe doug peterson will have his guys ready to go so i'm putting seven points is what i need a touchdown against an, a beat up team playing a lot of backups on the road Yes, and I understand they got to win to get into the playoffs. But unfortunately, they don't have the dudes. Yeah, they just don't. They have don't the have guys. the dudes. Yeah, I see it with you. Uh, I'm I'm a little fearful of the of the number just simply because it's uh, it's it's really at an NFL level when games come down to like this. Tennessee finds a way. Maybe Jacksonville kicks a field goal to win it. Uh, um, but I'm with you. I think Jags get to the playoffs in Doug Peterson's first year. And Trevor Lawrence gets to experience a playoff atmosphere. And they'll welcome in, most likely, a, a Chargers team that that was embarrassed by the Jags in yes, Week 3 yeah. earlier this year. All right, moving along. Giants at the Eagles. This is the NFC East. This game is one that's big for the Eagles and meaningless for the Giants, other than knocking off a foe, a, a division foe here. The Eagles, if they win, they're the number one overall seed. They get the bye, right? If they were mm-hmm. to lose... Dallas could sneak into the NFC East uh, with a win, and San Francisco can vault to the number one overall seed. How do you see this one going? Eagles' big favorite, knowing that the Giants are probably not going to play a lot of their starters getting ready for a playoff bid, most likely heading back to Minnesota in the wildcard weekend. Yeah, you just said it. You just hit on it, Ryan. This means nothing for the Giants. So why would you put Saquon Barkley in this ball game? Why would you put Daniel Jones in this ball game for four quarters? Some of the other guys on the defensive side, remember, they were dealing with a lot of injuries also, especially on the defensive side. This is a bonus week for the Giants. 
So I don't expect to see a lot from them in regards to their starters. And for Philly, yes, you need to win this ball game. I believe Jalen Hurts will play. But Jalen Hurts is the type of guy, their team is so talented, we can go ahead and take care of our business early ball game, put it in cruise control, let's get ready for playoff time, second round. So I take the under yeah. in this particular bet because I don't trust the Eagles being able to cover this 13 and a half point spread knowing they got to be very, very cautious and mindful of their star quarterback. Because I think one thing that we've learned over the last few weeks, without Jalen Hurts, this team is not as good. They're extremely beatable. So you got to protect your prize, your prize possession. And that is your star quarterback. So 13 and a half is too rich for me. But the under, 43, I love the under because who knows who we will see for the Giants and for how long in regards to Philly, get a, get a lead, yep. put it in cruise control, work the clock, let's get ready for second round action in the playoffs. Yeah, that will be huge for this team. And they the possibility of getting Lane Johnson back. You know, you talk yes. about some defensive injuries. And then, of course, Jalen Hurts one more week uh, to rally around his recovery as well. So, uh, big game. All right, the Sunday night football matchup, a little, little – uh, dumbfounded but the league put the Lions and Packers on Sunday night knowing that if Seattle wins uh you know as a player when you get knocked out of the playoff and you're eliminated I, I know you want to beat your Packers in Lambeau I mean it, it's a division foe but there's there's something that ticks away with that where you go you know we're not really playing for anything we're Green Bay's playing for everything they win they're in uh Lions and Packers Packers a favorite here what do you got even though that scenario could become a reality I still like the Detroit Lions. Really? I still like Woo! the Detroit Lions. Because this is a even, good one. Even if Seattle wins and Detroit don't stand a chance, you know Dan Campbell and his staff will have his guys fired up to provide some misery for the Green Bay Packers. Because, yes, hypothetically speaking, Seattle wins. You know what, guys? We missed our shot. We're not getting the playoffs. But misery loves company. Let's go kick some dirt on our division foe and make sure they don't get in as well. Then when you factor in how well they've been playing, even if they don't get a chance to get in the playoffs, this is, they can use this final game as momentum for the offseason. And then when it comes to the betting trends, Ryan, the Lions are 8-1 and one ATS in the last nine games overall. Get this, in the last 11 meetings with the Green Bay Packers, the Lions are 9-2 and two ATS. So something about these two teams when they face off, the Detroit Lions, even in their bad, ugly years, they found ways to cover. And as I mentioned, in their last nine games, if you've just been solely betting on the Detroit Lions, no question, you're in the green because they have been covering 8-1 and one ATS. So I factor all of that into the equation. I think their offense is rolling extremely balanced. Defensively, they have improved dramatically. they got to find a way to slow down a ground and pound attack from Green Bay, and I think they will put forth the effort to do so. Talk about getting five points. Yes, give me the Lions. Jair Alexander and his big hat might might be might be looking you up here when this weekend's over. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. How that no works. question. No question. All right, Brian McFadden, two-time Super Bowl champion. Thanks so much for taking some time. Great news we heard today out of Buffalo. Makes us very happy heading into the weekend. So uh, thanks to you, brother. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Yes, sir. All right, when we come back, we're going to go through our picks. We did it a little differently without knowing where DeMar Hamlin was at. I didn't feel necessarily comfortable making some picks, especially with all the unknowns, with the good news. I kind of sat down and really dug into some things, and we're going to do some things a little differently with our picks. Should make it for uh, a, a funner weekend for everybody involved when we come back here on The Straight Line with Ryan Leaf. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Straight Line with Ryan Leaf. Thanks to Brian McFadden once again for breaking down a few of the games. We're going to take you through the list of them. A little hesitant this week, as you know. We, I've been very adamant here on the show that uh, I would have recommended postponing the games this weekend, moving them to next weekend, and, and not because of the injury, right? And I think a lot of people got that wrong. Uh, that was a freak accident. Like, that, that, that shit's never going to happen, right? You never think that's going to happen. You can't protect against that. I was protecting against the player's mental health. I asked Bryant the question, you know, how he would have gone about his business, right? If, if we didn't start to get this good news, 
how would the Buffalo Bills be prepared? Or, or anybody in this league, right? There's about 1,800 players in the NFL, and they all dealt with this differently. We've heard, we've heard different answers. It's humanized them. They're fearful, uh, you know, and, and I thought it was imperative that the NFL, you know, who constantly talks about the health and well-being of these players to understand the mental health aspect of things because it's something you can't see. And I wanted players who were struggling maybe to be able to walk into the trainer's office and say, I am, I am struggling. I'm having some physical um, symptoms of PTSD, things. I just – we want to encourage that. And so I would have loved to seen that happen – we would have pushed everything back one week, no Pro Bowl week. We'll light into the Super Bowl after the AFC and NFC championships. But I get it. I know what it is. I know what machine looks like. I'm less against what they're doing this weekend because of the news that we heard. Now, that's going to play a huge factor in some of these decisions, too, by teams. Let's start with the NFC. The Eagles looking to button up the number one overall seed. They've lost two consecutive now without Jalen Hurts to the, to the Cowboys and to the Saints at home. They now get their their division foe who's already in the playoffs, who's already settled at number six. They're not going to get any better. They're not going to get any worse. They are at six. They most likely will have to travel to Minnesota again, uh, a game that they played incredibly well in and lost on the last second field goal. This game is meaningless to them. They need to keep people safe. They need to keep people healthy. So you're not going to see a, a lot of um, you know, defense, uh, let's say, on all, all the way around the field against Philadelphia. Sounds like Jalen Hurts is a go. Sounds like they're going to let him go at least early on to situate the, 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 the situation and get you to a place as the number one overall seed, and then get that bye week for Lane Johnson, for other guys to heal, and for Jalen Hurts also to heal and be ready to go in the divisional series, have to win two at home, and then off to the Super Bowl uh, in Glendale. We'll see how that goes. There's a lot of points there, 13 and a half points. You just don't know where this is going to go. The Points Bet Sportsbook app has a great uh, prop for you, all right? Highest scoring half, first half or second half, Go with the first half. It's a minus 120. I think that gives you your best chance. I do think just uh, Jalen Hurts and this Eagles team comes out firing on all cylinders. I think the most points that are scored in this game are going to be in the first half, and they've put it on cruise control in the second half. So it's an interesting prop here, right? We just had the prop queen on last uh, on last uh, last night's show. She kind of got me, you know, fired up about the props a little bit. Highest scoring half. The first half, that will get you a 120 right now on the Points Bet Sportsbook app. All right, moving along to the Cowboys at the Commanders. This game's going to be played at the same time. The Cowboys need the Eagles to get beat. Uh, that's looking harder and harder now with the Giants most likely resting a lot of their, their star players. The Cowboys, of course, uh, they don't want to get anybody hurt either. How they go about their business, you just don't know. The games are being played at the same time. Cowboys are a seven-point favorite. Uh, totals at 41. The Commanders are going to start Sam Howell, rookie out of North Carolina who hasn't played all year long. A uh, lot of turmoil this week. Ron Rivera not knowing that they could be eliminated a week ago, deciding to start Carson Wentz, and now all of a sudden, you know, we're going to go with the rookie. I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of chaos in Washington, and I don't know how focused guys are. They're playing against their rival. I get it. Uh, the Cowboys uh, probably not playing for too much. They're most likely locked into the number five seed. Um, which will send them to uh, send them to Tampa, a team they lost to in, in week one, of course, um, where everybody thought the, the Cowboys season was going to be a wash. We went something similar here, too. We went with the prop here. First half spread on the Points Bet Sportsbook app is minus 6.5. I think Dallas gets out to an early lead. They see that the Eagles most likely are going to hold on to that number one uh, seed as well as the NFC East and they kind of let off the gas pedal in the second half. So I got first half spread, Cowboys minus six and a half. That'll get you a plus 125, okay? Plus 125 on the Sportsbook app. Go with that one as the prop here in the first half bet for the Dallas Cowboys uh, this weekend leading into the playoffs. The other team that has a chance at the number one overall seed, the 49ers. They take on a Cardinals team that has just been decimated. Just injury-wise at the quarter, they're playing, I think, this is their fourth quarterback playing this year. Um, it, what's funny is in the NFC West, the 
The LA Rams have done the same. They've played four quarterbacks. San Francisco's played three quarterbacks. Between those teams, 11 starting quarterbacks so far this year in the NFC West. The only team, and the team I don't think anybody thought would be the case, but Geno Smith has made it the entire season for the Seattle Seahawks, and they have a chance at the playoffs if they were to win and the Green Bay Packers were to get beat. This game, for me, a lot of points. Minus 14. You know, they're playing for something, right? They're, they're playing for something. Uh, but the Eagles most likely, in, in the eyes of probably Kyle Shannon and everybody, they know how this is going to play out, so they don't want to do anything to damage. Debo Samuel sounds like he can go. I don't think you use him too much. I think you do something early. Um, uh, I, this one was so up in the air in terms of all the, the points and everything. I went with an interesting one. You might want to stay away from it because it's just there's so many unknowns, but I, I found a really interesting prop on uh, the Points Bet Sports app, Sportsbook app, and it's the cards to score first. They get the ball, they get down the field, they kick a field goal, go up 3-0, they may never score again. Cards to score first and lose, plus 280. I mean, that's that's an interesting prop, and it's one that's reasonably can happen. All depends on pretty much the coin toss, right? Who gets the ball first? If the Cardinals do, I wouldn't be surprised if they get into field goal range and maybe get a field goal and then ultimately lose the game. That's a really good payout if you're willing to throw a couple shekels down on them and see where that goes. So that's the prop we got for the Cardinals at the 49ers. Cards to score first and lose, plus 280. Who ends up with the number one seed after these three games? Ultimately, I believe it's going to be the Philadelphia Eagles. The Giants aren't playing for anything. Uh, They're going to score early like they have all year long offensively. Get out to an early lead coast with the Giants most play, most likely playing their backup quarterback as well as their backups on offense and defense, making sure no one gets hurt. Eagles win, get the number one overall seed, get the bye. That solidifies San Francisco as the number two seed, and then so on. We'll get into the others a little bit later. All right, staying in the NFC East, or sorry, we're staying in the NFC uh, West here. Rams at the Seahawks. This is a big game for Seattle, right? Rams coach Sean McVay, we heard this week, incredibly disappointed uh, in how the season has gone. Even with all the injuries and the things that have played out, he wishes they would have played better, that he had coached better, all of it. He heads up to Seattle trying to spoil the Seahawks' opportunity for the playoffs. Seahawks need some help, but a win carries them a long way. The win over the Jets last week in the fashion in which they did it, I think the crowd's going to be ready. I think this team's going to be ready to go. I like Seattle. I like Seattle so much, in fact, that I'm willing to take all those points. I'm going Seattle minus five and a half to put themselves in a position to then watch and hope that the Detroit Lions can get them into the playoffs. Let's go Seattle minus the five and a half against a Rams team that has been a little up and down, but when they played a solid and quality opponent last week in the Chargers, they got beat down pretty, pretty good. I, I expect the Seahawks to do the same at home against this Rams team. Uh, All right, moving along to that Sunday night football matchup. Talk to Brian McFadden about this, right? The idea that the NFL plays this game on Sunday night football when, in all reality, the Detroit Lions will know their fate going into this football game. They need the Rams to go up there and beat them for them to have a chance to get into the playoffs. And our friend Brian McFadden went and rode with the Lions. They've been great against the spread. Um especially in Packers games in the past. I would have bounced back against them a little bit. The Packers have been giant favorites over the Detroit Lions over the last few years because the Lions have been so bad. This line isn't too far-fetched, right? It's at five points. And what the Packers have been doing extremely well of late is running the football. And what does Detroit do horribly? Stop the run. Vice versa with the Lions versus the run game, uh, run-stopping force of the Green Bay Packers, though the Green Bay Packers have gotten better defensively over the last few weeks. And they've played quality opponents, right? They've had to get wins against playoff teams, possible playoff teams, the Miami Dolphins, the Minnesota Vikings, and they've done it well. Defense has started to show up better, like I said, and the return game, which has been such a difference maker. It got them on the board early against Minnesota and set that beat down into process. Um, I think the same happens. I think the Lions see that the Seattle wins earlier in the day. I'm not with Brian on this. I think the team starts to fold a little bit because they're they're upset. I know Dan Campbell will try to get them. I only think that lasts for maybe a quarter or two. And then Aaron Rodgers and his ability to, to get his team and motivate them and get them to the playoffs happens once again. They get the win, and I'm taking Green Bay minus the five points here 
to win, become playoff eligible, and then set their sights on the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm telling you right now, I don't think anybody out there would probably pick against San Francisco because of their defense, because of Kyle Shanahan. But I don't know if I can bet against Aaron Rodgers, uh, the two-time reigning MVP, up against Brock Purdy. I know they don't play against each other, but just the overall meaningfulness of that game, that will be incredibly interesting. Green Bay gets the win, minus the five, gets to the playoffs as the number seven seed. All right, the Vikings at the Bears. Bears, of course, playing for nothing. Nathan Peterman gets the start for the uh, Chicago Bears. A little side note, my little brother will be in the points bet sportsbook uh, suite in uh, Soldier Field. So enjoy that, Brady Leaf and uh, and the fans. Um, Vikings here. Um, I think I answered the question that we wanted to go in terms of who gets the number seven seed. Seahawks win, Lions lose, Packers win, Packers are in, okay? Vikings again at, at the Bears. Vikings seven and a half point favorite. The over-under, this was a lot. This was this was a lot for me. 43 and a half points. With Justin Fields, it's a different story. That dude can, can help put up 20, 30 points with what he does. Over with the Bears has been a pretty good bet all year long. But Nathan Peterman, who hasn't played all year, uh, you know, I know it's going against a, a bad Vikings team. I think they try to get Justin Jefferson really involved and try to make up for the, you know, the poor showing a week ago. So I think they may be able to score a lot of points, but I, I don't think Chicago can. And so I'm going to go with the under here. Let's go with the under 43 and a half in the Vikings Bears matchup where it's going to be pretty darn cold. All right, Bucks at Falcons. The Bucks sewed up the NFC South a week ago with their win over the Carolina Panthers. Uh, the Falcons are a four-point favorite. The Bucks aren't moving anywhere. They're the number four seed in the NFC. They're not going anywhere. They're hosting a game. This game is meaningless to them. Uh, how many guys get to play? How long does Tom Brady go? All of those things. Uh, Blaine Gabbert, um, he gets a chance to go. Kyle Trask is most likely going to maybe get some get some run. Uh, you know, I think the as we can see, the sports books believe that the Falcons uh, are a favorite because of that case. I I don't. I think that you're going to get some guys playing. I think the, the Atlanta Falcons are, you know, just kind of licking their wounds on a season. They they get the win a week ago in just kind of ugly fashion with a field goal late. Don't help us at all with the cover on that deal, Atlanta. And I think they do the same. I'm going Bucks here plus the four. It, this is this one for me was uh, it really wasn't that too hard to think that way, even knowing that the Bucks aren't going to play a lot of their starters. Right? I don't know how many. Falcon starters are going to play either. I mean, he's going to have to shift around his roster too. The game's meaningless for them. Uh, I think the Bucks go in and, and they get some play from guys that haven't played much this year uh, and given an opportunity, they do the best they can and, and they find a way to beat a Falcons team that's not very good, right? Bucks plus the four in this matchup, staying in the NFC West. Panthers, who had a chance a week ago, traveled to the Saints. Saints, the three and a half point favorite. Uh, Two very good defenses in a game that doesn't mean anything other than for pride for both these teams. Two very, very good defenses. Offenses have sputtered, have been decent at times. I think uh, uh, I think we're going to go with the total here. I think we go with the under 42 points in this matchup, okay? So there you go. Some interesting ways to go about the picks this week. We did some props. We did some totals and we did some spreads in the nfc to answer your questions uh who gets the number one seed we answered that with the eagles with their win uh as well as who gets the seven seed we're going to go with the packers win and you're in at home against the lions on sunday night football all right everybody when we come back we're going to take you through week eight week 18 slate of games for the afc and see how that plays out right here on the straight line with ryan leaf we'll be right back we'll be right back All right, everybody, welcome back to The Straight Line with Ryan Leaf, Friday edition before week 18, games that are going to be kicked off tomorrow, both AFC matchups, right, Kansas City and Las Vegas, as well as Tennessee and Jacksonville. Well, we're going to start with the Patriots. Patriots at the Bills, all right? The, the positive and good news we've heard from, uh, from DeMar Hamlin over the last few days has bolstered and buoyed this, this Bills team. Uh, 
but a lot goes into it. A lot plays into this simply because of a few things. Kansas City plays the day before, right? They're going to know their fate. If Kansas City wins, they're the number one overall seed. If they don't, then they have something a little bit more to play for. Now, I do think they're going to have a lot to play for because of the health of DeMar, DeRo- or DeMar Hamlin. That being the case, uh, I want you to do two things, okay, before you make this bet. If the Chiefs lose, I want you to go Pats plus seven because I think Patriots keep it close, but ultimately I think the Bills win the football game because I just I think emotionally they're going to hit a wall. Uh, it may last a few quarters, who knows, but I think the Patriots keep it close. Ultimately, the Bills win if the Chiefs were to lose. If the Chiefs win on Saturday, I think Buffalo – does a good job of, of keeping guys safe and healthy, and I go Patriots money line, okay? Patriots money line there is plus 240, all right? That's if the Chiefs win. If they lose, I want you to go Pats plus the seven in this instance, uh, though believing the Bills still get the win and sew up the number two seed as it is done uh, if the Chiefs win. All right, moving along, Ravens at Bengals, okay? Um, Lamar Jackson ruled officially out. He hasn't been around at practice. I, I didn't expect him to play. Tyler Huntley, uh, you know, and this and this team has is, is struggled offensively. You know, plain and simple, they scored 13 points against the against the uh, uh, Steelers a week ago. They you know blew a, a double digit lead for the fourth time this year. Defense is playing much better. Okay, offense if. His first guy isn't open. He tends to start to take off. Uh, not great throwing down the field uh, on the run when he needs to. Uh, so I, I think that presents problems. I think, and, and because Cincinnati needs to win this game, right, to host that that first round playoff game against most likely the the Baltimore Ravens once again. Uh, and they also look back at that that loss to them early in the year. And they have a lot of emotion around this, right? They they were a part of that Monday Night Football game. Uh, I think the number's at eight right now, actually, um, and uh, that's a big number. That's that's a lot of points. Um, so I'm going to go Ravens here plus eight. I think the game stays tight. I think Buffalo ultimately, or sorry, Cincinnati ultimately wins this game. But eight's a lot. They could win by a touchdown if the number drops. If it gets back to seven or maybe six and a half, then I probably would go Bengals. But if it gets higher, if it goes seven, eight. Uh, I, I'd stay with the Ravens plus the points, knowing that that Cincinnati ultimately wins this game. All right, Chiefs at the Raiders. This is the first game of the weekend. Kicks off Saturday afternoon, 4.15 Eastern time. The Chiefs are 8.5-point favorites. The total, big number, 52.5. Uh, Las Vegas showed last week with all their weapons back, even with Jared Stidham, they can score some points. They did it against a very good defense And Kansas City doesn't have the same kind of defense, right? They've just gone through a couple games with the Denver Broncos where the over hit. And so we're going to go there. Uh, I think the Chiefs win this game. I don't know if they win it by a bunch or not. Uh, There's a pretty good same-game parlay here, everybody, all right? Over 52.5 points plus the Chiefs' money line gets you a plus 120. So let's go with that. Fun player or fun uh, um, prop, game prop on – uh, Points Bet Sportsbook app, okay, gets you the over 52 and a half plus the Chiefs money line. Same game parlay gets you a plus 120. Let's go with that. Let's make some money there, okay? Titans at Jags, the game that follows, right? This one's for the AFC South. Uh, this one is an uh, incredibly important game, uh, of course, because it may get Jacksonville to the playoffs for the first time. These two teams after week 11 were on complete opposites. Jacksonville was 3-7. and seven, Tennessee was 7-3. and three. Now they're playing for a chance at the playoffs uh, with a championship game of sorts in Jacksonville. Um, I think the Jags are up to the task. I don't know if the 6.5 points are managed. I think the Titans may keep it close. I do think this game's tight. I think it's low scoring. I think it's a 20-17 to 17. 17 to 14 type of game. So we're going to go a same game parlay here as well. Okay. The under 40 total. Okay. Under 40 and Jags money line gets you a same game parlay on the points bet sportsbook app plus 150. This is, this is reasonable. Like the under of 40 points, which is very reasonable. And I think it's going to happen. And and I do think that the Jags find a way to get it done and get a win. So go with them the money line. Same game parlay on the Points Bet Sportsbook app, plus 150. 
Okay. Who ends up being the number one seed after those uh, games we talked about? Uh, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be the Kansas City Chiefs. They get the win against Las Vegas. Uh, that allows them to be the number one overall seed. It will change things if the competition committee, of course, okay's a neutral site AFC championship if one of those two of those three teams are are part of the equation. Ultimately, Kansas City being in that situation. All right, Jets at the Dolphins. Uh, everybody knew that this was going to be uh, a huge game between Joe Flacco uh, and Skylar Thompson. Uh, Dolphins playing for a playoff spot, right? You want to hear something funny about what the Dolphins have done this year? They started 3-0, and then went 0-3, then went 5-0, and and now are 0-5. What do they do? Do they start a new winning streak? They are favored here. Joe Flacco had a pretty good performance against the Cleveland Browns in a comeback win, but wasn't necessarily sharp in his early starts for the for the Jets. Uh, so I expect Miami, with an opportunity to go to the playoffs on the line to play their best football. The Jets' defense got run through by the Seahawks a week ago. I think they run the ball well, and I think they allow Skylar Thompson to do some things with their play action to get to their high-priced and talented wide receivers. We're going Miami here minus the two, okay? Browns at Steelers. Steelers still have an outside chance. They need the Dolphins to lose. They need New England to lose, and they can get in. They can be 9-8, and eight, get Mike Tomlin over that hump of the 500 mark for the 17th consecutive year, but not get into the playoffs. Browns aren't playing for anything, right? They're playing to not get hurt. Jad- Jadavian Clowney already spoke out against the Browns as getting left behind. Uh, Kenny Pickett with the comeback win. They feel pretty good. The defense is playing well. I mean, this is for Mike Tomlin. This is for a chance to get the playoffs. And the fact that it's only a two and a half point game, kidding me? I'd probably take this game at minus five. Let's go. Steelers, minus two and a half in this one. We went with the same game parlay as this one in this one, too. Okay. That's why I asked Brian if he liked the under. Uh, I do, too. Steelers, minus two and a half, and the under of 40 and a half on the same game parlay on the Points Bet Sportsbook app gets you a plus 240. That is a real, real good shot of hitting. So we went with three. Uh, I haven't got to yet. I think we, we're going to go with four same-game parlays, everybody. All right, who grabs the final AFC playoff bid, Patriots, Dolphins, or Steelers? Depends on what the Chiefs do. Chiefs win. I believe the Patriots get in. Chiefs lose. I think the Bills ultimately beat the Patriots. Dolphins win. Dolphins get in. Dolphins get in as the number seven seed, uh, depending on what the Chiefs do. So if you got to take a look at it that way, uh, we'll know a lot more come come Saturday afternoon what we're looking at. Chargers at Broncos. Chargers, of course, um, will know. We'll know whether they have the number five seed sewn up before they kick off. And they want the five seed. They want to go to Jacksonville or Tennessee. They do not want to go to Cincinnati in round one because they already know they're going to have to either go uh, to uh, most likely go to Kansas City, uh, which they are very capable of winning in, uh, in week two. They already know that, and then most likely would have to go on the road to either Buffalo or Cincinnati uh, for the AFC championship. They don't want to start out that way. They want a rematch against the Jags uh, because that's probably the easiest path for them to get into the AFC championship, which is a real possibility. So they'll know before kickoff. If the Ravens lose to Cincinnati in the early window, you know, they'll they'll take their foot off the gas, right? Justin Herbert may not go. Uh, A lot of the defensive guys that have been banged up, you're you're most likely not going to see Bosa, who sounds like he's healthy to go, Austin Eckler, all the guys. That's why the Broncos are a favorite. So the way we looked at it uh, in this instance, uh, we went Broncos – Minus two and a half because we do believe that that the Chargers are going to sit a lot of people. The Broncos minus two and a half if Ravens win. Okay, Broncos minus two and a half if Ravens win. If the Ra or sorry, Broncos minus the two and a half if the Ravens lose. Okay, if the Ravens win, we're going Chargers plus two and a half. All right, so you have to make a decision right before kickoff on what that bet is. Hopefully, we'll know. Hopefully, that Ravens game will be over before kickoff of the uh, Chargers-Broncos games because that's going to be our deciding factor in what we do. If the Chargers have to play for something, because if they have to play for the 5 seed, they'll play for it because that's a much easier venue to go to and play Jacksonville, a team making their first playoff appearance, 
Uh, though the Chargers would be making their first playoff appearance too with with Justin Herbert. So that could be interesting. It'd just be much more difficult to go to Cincinnati as the sixth seed to take on Joe Burrow and that team who are defending AFC champions. They want the five seed. Ravens win, LA plus two and a half. Ravens lose, Broncos minus two and a half. All right, last game. Uh, I don't know what you want to call this one, uh, whatever you want to call it for the first round pick overall, essentially. Texans uh, can do, uh, or the Colts can do the Texans a huge fa- or favor by beating them. Uh, the the Colts can do a huge favor for the for the for the uh, Bears, and that would be to lose. So the Bears would have the number one overall pick. There's a lot that goes into this. Texans at Colts. Colts favored by two and a half points. Uh, we're going Texans here. Texans money line plus one thirty. Uh, I, I I know the number one overall pick is meaningful, and I know a lot of people. You think there's uh, there's conspiracies out there. I think the Texans are playing much better football of late than the Indianapolis Colts are. I just do. I think the Colts have been bad. Uh, you know, I don't know who's going to play quarterback for the Colts, but I do know that the the Texans continue to play hard for Lovey Smith all year long. I think they find a way to win this game. Uh, pretty good payout there. Plus 130 for the money line. Texans win. Uh, I, I don't know if that it does. It, that, will, that will move them out of the number one overall seed, especially a uh, number one overall pick, especially if the Bears get beat by the Vikings uh, this week as well. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. All right, let's look at the playoff picture, all right? So after looking and, and seeing our picks for the game, this is what I've got, all right? This is what I've got in the AFC. Kansas City wins. They're the number one overall seed, right? That sets Buffalo as the number two overall seed locked in regardless of outcome of their win uh, or loss against the New England Patriots. That puts Cincinnati in at the number three seed. So if Kansas City wins on Saturday, it's done. It's Kansas City, Buffalo, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, or Tennessee are locked in at number four. I think it's going to be the Jags. I think Baltimore gets beat by Cincinnati. Uh, Therefore, locking in the Rams, or sorry, locking in the Chargers as the number five seed. That puts Baltimore as the number six seed. And then you have, in what we looked as it played out, either New England, Miami, or Pittsburgh in the seventh seed. Again, depends on what happens uh, with, uh, with the Chiefs. Chiefs win. I believe the Patriots find a way to win that game against the Bills, get into the playoffs. If the Chiefs lose and Buffalo's playing for that number one seed, I think they get it done, pushes New England out, Miami in with their win against the Jets, all right? That's what we got. So if that played out, we'd have New England or Miami at Buffalo in the divisional round. We'd have Baltimore at Cincinnati. And then we'd have L.A. at the Jags if if the Chiefs were to win. That's what the AFC wildcard weekend would look like. Moving on to the NFC side of things. Philly wins. They're the number one overall seed. They get the bye. San Francisco is solidified as the number two seed. Minnesota at the three seed with a win over the Bears. Tampa Bay is already set at the four seed, regardless of what plays out this weekend. Dallas would then be the five seed at 12 and four. They would go to eight and eight or nine and eight or eight and nine Tampa Bay Buccaneers in in the first round of the wild card. And the New York Giants at number six. At seven, we have the Green Bay Packers winning and being in. They're the seven seed. So that gives you the first round of playoffs for the wild card next weekend. Green Bay at San Francisco. New York at Minnesota, and Dallas at Tampa. Tampa beat Dallas to start the season. Minnesota beat the Giants just a few weeks ago on a last-second field goal from from Joseph from like 60 yards. So that game can – we know that could be a really good game and a very winnable one for the Giants as the sixth seed. They would then get the Philadelphia Eagles in a game where we won't get the real matchup this weekend. We could – in the first in the divisional round of the playoffs in Philadelphia, a divisional game between the Giants and the Eagles in that matchup. So there you have it. Those are what we believe here at the straight line the seeds will be. Kansas City, Philly get the one seeds, New England at Buffalo, Baltimore at Cincy, LA at Jacksonville, Green Bay at San Francisco, New York at Minnesota, Dallas at Tampa with Philly uh, at that number one overall seed. All right, we'll see how it all plays out. We'll be here Monday. To recap it all, get you ready for Wild Card Weekend next week. Also, we'll get you ready for the national championship between the TCU Horn Frogs as well 
as the Georgia Bulldogs when they battle at SoFi Stadium Monday night. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks to Brian McFadden once again. Prayers up and thank God that DeMar Hamlin uh, has progressed in what he has in the last few days. I mean, it just it, – it removes that huge weight over our chest watching football uh, commence once again this weekend. It just it, – it, it, it's a lighter feeling knowing that he's going to be okay. So thank God for that. And uh, it just – it makes everybody here at the show so incredibly happy after dealing with everything this whole week. All right? We'll see you Monday. Enjoy the weekend games, everybody. Happy holidays. Once again, and Happy New Year from The Straight Line with Ryan Leaf. We'll see you on Monday.